Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks again for joining us for an update on uh, COVID-19. As most of you know, the number of reported cases has seen a significant uptick in the United States and in Massachusetts. And our state health officials are closely monitoring and tracing presumptive positive cases, which currently stand at 108 presumptive positive cases here in the Commonwealth. This outbreak and the impact of concerns over the spread is already being felt by everyone. We've seen professional sport cancellations, travel restrictions, and a host of postponements and cancellations for big events and activities. It's hard to believe, and it's certainly disappointing and upsetting, I think, for everybody. And this does represent a significant change in daily life for the vast majority of people here in the Commonwealth. So I've said before, the time period we are now, we are in now, marks a pivotal moment on what we do and how we behave in our daily life to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Right now, the data indicates that the number of people infected and requiring medical attention is very much within our healthcare system's capacity to serve and handle. The highly contagious nature of this disease means that if everyone plays their part in slowing the spread down, the number of people who become infected and require medical attention doesn't spike all at once, perhaps with overwhelm our systems. We understand that asking people to change their habits, cancel events, and cancel travel is inconvenient, we understand that it also comes with a financial impact. But waiting to act and allowing infections and such number of people who need medical attention to spike all at once would not only severely hamper our hospital's ability to care for those who need to be cared for, but will have a far greater economic impact in the future as well. Today, one of the additional steps we're taking to prevent the spread and keep our community safe is we've just issued guidance that will prohibit gatherings of over 250 people in the Commonwealth effective immediately. The gatherings in this order are subject but are not limited to community, civic, public, and leisure gatherings, faith-based events, sporting events with spectators, concerts, conventions, fundraisers, parades, fairs, festivals, and any similar event or activity that brings together 250 or more persons in a single room or single space at the same time. This order does not apply to the normal operations at airports, bus and train stations, medical facilities, libraries, shopping malls and centers, polling locations, grocery or retail stores, or other spaces where 250 more persons may be in transit. The order also does not apply to restaurants, provided that they should, whenever possible, encourage social distancing. Finally, this order does not apply to typical office environments, government buildings, or factories where large numbers of people are present, but it is unusual for them be within arm's length of one another. I know there will be questions on the particulars of this guidance. We've posted it in its entirety on Mass.gov and encourage folks to refer to the details on the order for more information. I'd also like to talk a little bit about separate guidance issued by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Department of Public Health. Earlier today, Desi spoke with school superintendents from across the Commonwealth. And with our Department of Public Health's guidance and support, issued detailed guidance to our public schools about how districts should respond to mitigate the spread of coronavirus. That guidance gives schools very specific advice about when to close individual schools and for how long. Our public health officials do not recommend school systems shut down system-wide at this time. They recommend careful monitoring of students and temporary closures to allow for schools to clean and reopen. For more detailed information, please see the specific guidance which has been posted on the website. Federal officials continue to issue new rules and guidance related to travel restrictions and social distancing. We encourage the public to remain informed and to follow that guidance. We will continue to enforce recommendations at the state level as well. Earlier this week, we declared a state of emergency here in Massachusetts, and that declaration and does give our administration more flexibility to respond to this outbreak. We've enhanced guidance from executive branch employees and we encourage employers and organizations to follow that guidance whenever appropriate. We've also limited visitor access to long-term care facilities to keep some of our most vulnerable residents safe. And we've encouraged older adults and individuals with health issues to avoid large gatherings and large events. And of course, we should all remember 
to maintain our personal hygiene. And that means wash your hands 20 seconds, warm water regularly, and use hand sanitizer. Cover your mouth with your sleeve if you sneeze or cough. Stay home. Stay home if you're not feeling well. And stay informed on guidance coming from health officials. Everybody needs to do their part on this for us to be successful in reducing the spread of this virus at this time. Thank you. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Secretary Sutters. I was going to say good morning, but good afternoon. As the governor said, we continue, Massachusetts continues to receive CDC test kits and uses the kits consistent with the CDC guidelines to identify positive cases of COVID-19 as quickly as possible. We continue to request and receive new test kits and are able to test an additional 5,000 individuals. Our state public health lab is working 24-7 and turning around results in 24 to 48 hours, depending on test volume. And beginning sometime next week, we will actually able, be able to double the capacity of testing at our state lab from about 200 a day to 400 a day, with additional automation going in place over this weekend. Yesterday, we received good news that two commercial labs, LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, received federal approval for testing, which will, which will support our state lab to expedite the testing process. As the governor has said, it is important that more labs be approved by the federal government and come online in Massachusetts, and we continue to urge the FDA and CDC to help us expand our testing capacity so that we can test more residents across the Commonwealth. Additionally, beginning next week, in fact on Wednesdays at noontime, we will be posting the testing data online in terms of the number of people who have been tested and the number of individuals who are positive. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m., this will coincide with our weekly updates to self-quarantine monitoring data. Late yesterday afternoon, actually early evening, we, re we received our first partial shipment from the Strategic National Stockpile, which is administered by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's a supplies of gowns, masks, eye protection, and gloves. We quickly deployed that, some of that material to Berkshire late last evening. And we are continuing to fulfill orders today and throughout the weekend. As the governor mentioned, I just want to reiterate, if you go on to the mass.gov DPH COVID-19, you will see specific guidances for all of our long-term care facilities. I'm talking about nursing homes, rest homes, and assisted living, where we have actually issued visitation restrictions, as well as we have posted very specific guidances for other congregate care settings, such as 24-7 group homes, just as an example, guidances for in-home caregivers and workers, both agency-based and non-agency-based, and community day program settings. And finally, at this moment, I am pleased to announce that our 211 line is officially up and running in English, Spanish, and other languages. And we would encourage the public to call 211 and they will get an automatic, automated menu of options, behavioral health, other options, and specifically coronavirus. Callers press 26 for coronavirus. The call taker answers in English. If another language is needed, the operator connects to one of 150 languages and dialects, pulling in a translator. Operators have been given very brief scripts and will provide answers using DPH website as a source of truth. The new 211 capabilities are in addition to the mass.gov slash COVID-19, which is updated daily. Thank you. 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 Thank you.